All right, let's dig into this and start by examining the locations. This new clip featured in the docu-series Queens was filmed on the Baja coast near Cabo. I can understand why many people think this was somewhere else. The film itself doesn't tell you, not even in the credits. In fact, one might be led to believe this was the Alaskan coast, the way the story shifts from the bear on land out to the sea. Most of the news articles that came out regarding this footage immediately started talking about port and starboard and the disappearance of white sharks in South Africa, overlapping the two and probably causing confusion. Some of those articles didn't flat out say it was South Africa, but they also didn't mention that it was Baja. Then you had some news sources literally telling you that it was South Africa, which it wasn't. And with the number of copy and paste sites set up out there, when one news outlet gets it wrong, many of them do. How do I know? A cinematographer friend of mine knows the drone operator named Jack Johnston. I wrote to Jack, who confirmed that he filmed it and where he filmed it. Topic two, frequency and uniqueness of this event. Almost every single article I found stated that this was the first time such an event was documented. They either flat out said it was the first time an orca had been documented killing a white shark, or said it was the first time a solo orca had killed a white shark, or threw in a couple of small words and other articles that could make it technically correct while still sounding like it was the first time. Anyway, it wasn't the first time an orca killed a white shark, it wasn't the first time it was documented, and it wasn't the first time an orca killed a white shark in solo fashion. All three of those can be debunked by the 1997 incident at the Farallon Islands, also the first documented incident. Unfortunately, being 1997, what little footage there is, is pretty bad. Let me put into perspective how much things have changed. Even in 2006, nearly a decade later, I was the only one on board with a video camera capturing this white shark killing a pinniped. Things were just different. Anyway, back to 1997. I remember this clearly because I was very excited when the news came out. After all, it was the very first time we'd ever heard of such a thing. Prior to that, most people assumed the two animals steered clear of each other and that such an encounter existed only in fantasy, such as in Jaws 2, in which case the white shark actually won. I was fortunate enough to know shark dive operators working the Farallons who gave me a detailed account of the incident. A single orca made short work of the white shark, then lifted the body out of the water next to a tourist boat as if to show off the kill. The orca came up to the boat, right up next to the boat with this now dead white shark in its mouth, holding it up. And uh, it was holding it up, you know, I like to say like a, like a cat with a mouse, you know, bragging, showing you what it could do. In that case, the sharks mostly left the area for a while. A few years later, the presence of orcas led to sharks leaving the area once again. Yes, it's true that other orcas were in the area at the time that a single orca took out the white shark. But that's true of all of these incidents. At least one other orca, and in some cases several orcas, were in the vicinity during each of these events, regardless of if, in one case, multiple orcas teamed up on the shark, or one orca took out the shark. Why am I spending so much time on what some might think is a trivial detail? Well, because the researchers are making it way more than a trivial detail. Not only are they incorrectly claiming that it's the first time that it has taken place, they are saying that it is showing a trend in which orcas are hunting white sharks with such frequency now that they've learned to do it without the help of other orcas. Combine that with all the headlines talking about these orcas as if they are villains, and these exact same South African scientists prematurely declaring their opinions as facts, that it's not the fishing industry, it is the orcas. That's a controversial statement, so let me be very clear, and I'm going to break down the details of this in an upcoming episode in this series. A select 
group of scientists was chosen by the increasingly corrupt South African government to put together information showing that the orcas are to blame and the fishing industry is not to blame. While, mind you, omitting the scientists who don't agree with those scientists. Yeah, we'll circle back to this. This damn near seems like fear-mongering directed toward orcas. Okay, now let's start getting into the details about whether or not this is rare, how many places it's happened, and whether or not a single orca taking out a white shark is a new occurrence. Let's review a few of these incidents. The 1997 case at the Farallon Islands, there were two orcas. Only one orca had anything to do with the killing of the white shark. The second orca was not involved until the feeding part after the death of the shark. This footage out of Baja, this is the matriarch leaving the pod to go and kill this shark one-on-one. -on -one. By the way, this was filmed in 2022, which would put it well ahead of this Mossel Bay event, which is being proclaimed as the first time ever documented. Speaking of the Mossel Bay event, there were two orcas at that one as well. Port and starboard were both there, but just like in the other incidents I spoke of, only one orca was directly involved in the killing. We've also had documented cases of orcas hunting white sharks in South Australia and suspicion of it taking place in New Zealand. Add the South African incidents and this new Baja incident, you now have four, maybe five, distinct locations separated by thousands of miles where this has taken place. This is worth mentioning for several reasons. One of the publications coming out of South Africa references a threat to ecological balance due to specific orcas passing on learned behavior of killing white sharks to other orcas. Yet we also have orcas doing this in five locations around the world that couldn't be further apart. It's worth mentioning quickly, and I'll circle back to this later, that this hasn't been Port and Starboard acting alone in South Africa. Why do I think New Zealand is a likely place that this will happen if it isn't already happening? Well, what are the white shark hotspots on the planet? The Farallon Islands, Cape Cod, South Africa, South Australia, New Zealand, Guadalupe, and the Mediterranean. We should probably start counting Baja as well, since it's a pretty well accepted nursery area for white sharks. And we got white sharks and orcas there. Orcas are rarely spotted in Cape Cod, rarely spotted in the Mediterranean. And as far as I know, and I know a lot of people have operated Guadalupe, and I've been there many times, the closest I've heard of orcas near Guadalupe Island is three miles out, and even that was rare. What's my point? In each of the locations where orcas and white sharks are both regularly sighted, four out of five of those have already had documented white shark orca encounters. New Zealand is the exception. But New Zealand, just like in South Africa, has seven gill sharks, which the orcas hunt in both locations. It doesn't seem like a stretch to me that white sharks will be on the orca menu in New Zealand if they aren't already. And as much as Shark Week likes to run with this serial killer label on wildlife, I imagine if an orca doesn't kill a white shark in New Zealand soon, they'll go ahead and kill their own white shark and feed it to an orca, then reenact the scene just using the footage of the orca eating the carcass. At this point, where do you stand? Do you feel like this is a rare event or are you leaning toward it's not such a rare event? A lot of this has to do with whether or not you have an anthropocentric approach to this, meaning human-centered, meaning if we didn't witness it, if we don't know about it, then it doesn't exist. On the other hand, we only have the evidence that we have. So I've shown that it takes place in multiple locations on the planet. It's happened several times. The place that we've seen it the most is South Africa, but there's a reason for that. I think there's a reason for that. 
The Seal Islands, the pinniped colonies, where the white sharks aggregate and where the orcas are spotted, are only minutes from land. I mean, it's one of the reasons it's one of the best places to go and see this wildlife. It's very accessible. The other locations are hours, if not days, from land. That simply reduces the chances of humans witnessing events at those locations if humans aren't there. In South Africa, you have boats heading out to these locations around the clock every day. Research boats, whale watching boats, shark watching boats, fishing boats. My point being, you could argue either direction at this point, whether this is a rare event or if it's safe to assume this is happening more than we think it is, we're just not seeing it. Now that we've eliminated the idea that this was a unique event, we can ponder how long this has been taking place. Orcas hunt many species of shark, and it seems hunt pretty much whatever they want. Some specialize in fish, that's true. Others specialize in mammals, that's true. But it's undeniable that their ability to kill ranges vastly from the largest animal on the planet, the blue whale, to small targets like herring. Consider the orca that killed the white shark at the Farallon Islands. It was a transient orca. They are known to specialize in killing pinnipeds or other marine mammals. That whale switched from killing pinnipeds to killing a white shark on the spot. No specialization required. Imagine killing a great white shark as an afterthought. So is it a stretch to think that a hunter of this magnitude has opportunistically targeted white sharks from time to time since the very beginning of their existence together in the ocean? Perhaps it's just our perception that this is happening more due to our ability to witness it more via drones or there being more boats on the water or just people having more cameras in general. Speaking of witnessing the events, it's important to point out that the majority of recorded mortalities on white sharks by orcas in South Africa are based on carcasses washing to shore, not on actually witnessing the event. So with that in mind, what about locations on the planet where humans don't find the carcasses? It seems a stretch to believe that the only time that this happens is when we witness it or find evidence of it. On the other hand, there's a very real possibility that the orcas are responding to need. It's hard to deny that the ocean is changing. It's hard to deny that the ocean is being depleted. Is this a response to their normal food sources not being available? Is it a stress response to the ocean suffering? But if we're going to acknowledge that, then we need to point the finger at ourselves rather than being so anxious to point it at the orcas. I'm going to bring episode two to a close, but believe it or not, I'm only scratching the surface on this topic. Things are going to get a little bit heavier as we move forward, as I deeply examine the research papers coming out of South Africa on both sides of the argument. I'm going to take a look at the casualties inflicted by humans compared to casualties inflicted by ocean predators. Why are you hearing about some things and not about other things? For example, did you know that a whistleblower from one of the fishing boats came forward and exposed the damage being caused to white sharks in South Africa from the inshore fisheries? Hmm. No, you didn't hear about that, did you? And a few more topics that you'll just have to wait and see. In the comments, please let me know what you thought about this episode. Which way are you leaning on the questions that were presented in this one? What did I miss? What do you agree with? Thanks for tuning in.